Uh, I have been listening to Jamie McDell's new album because I've had the privilege of listening to it ahead of release. And Jamie, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of work. So it's really a thrill for me to speak to you. Hello. Oh, thank you so much. It's a thrill for me to speak to you as well. Thank you for having me. (laughs) I thought I'd start um, way back at the beginning of your musical life. And I read that you uh, wrote your first song, on a yacht um, and you have been on this yacht from the age of seven. I don't know at what age though you wrote that song. Yeah, I think I must have been about seven when I wrote it. Um, we had, yeah, a pretty interesting childhood. My dad's quite adventurous and um, he kind of moved us onto this boat for a few years. And uh, I suppose I just didn't have that much to do. <laughs> and that's kind of where I, I think I just, figured I could start writing songs and little things like that so I used to um kind of stand up at the bow of the boat and all these pods of dolphins would actually come through quite often the ocean was really alive where we were and um I wrote this song to the dolphins kind of thinking maybe they could hear it or (laughs) were like attracted to it I don't know (laughs) but yeah that kind of sparked the whole making up stuff (laughs) Well, if they kept coming back to visit you, maybe they were attracted to the song. Yeah, I had a feeling. (laughs) So did you, was that the start of continuous songwriting or did you just write the one song and and then didn't come back to it for a while? Yeah, I probably took, I I didn't do too much songwriting after that, to be honest. I, I do think I got a really big kind of, hit of it when I was around 14 and I started learning the guitar right. um and I just really didn't spend too much time with covers I, I think I was quite a uh yeah you know self-absorbed young person and was really quick to kind of go yeah I need to write about like my own dramatic life and <laughs> kind of went from there and yeah I honestly I used to write all the time um, to either kind of complain about my parents or the school teachers or whatever it was going to be. Yeah, it was. I felt really sorry for them, but <laughs> that's kind of how it all started. Did any of those songs make it into a school performance? <laughs> oh, I, I don't think I got to perform them at school, but I remember I would kind of somehow, I can't remember how it went, there was a song about a teacher that a lot of like my mum's and dad's friends found really funny and they'd get me to sing it at people's birthday parties kind of as a bit of a joke but <laughs> no my teachers got off scotch-free yeah <laughs> so I'm guessing by the time you started learning guitar at 14 you were back on land by then that's right yeah yeah <laughs> back on land back into school and you know the kind of awful experiences you have it as a 14 year old girl and I'm, I mean I, I'm so grateful for those things because they really did spark the kind of beginning of my yeah diary entries and yeah. songwriting journey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did also read that while you were at sea uh, there were cassettes of uh, Jimmy Buffett, John Denver and James Taylor on the yacht with you and I'm wondering if there was any out of those three you particularly connected to. Yeah, I think um, I think probably John Denver and his style of songwriting. M- most importantly, I kind of actually think his um, sort of crisp vocal and the way he, I suppose I would call it like n- not over sings. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I really enjoyed trying to kind of replicate that sort of sound if I could. Although I remember it was a shame I didn't listen to more female artists as a young girl because I remember being pretty gutted that I didn't have a male voice, which <laughs> just seems so funny now. But I just yeah, I remember being like, damn this sucks. <laughs> I think that's normal though, because there are a lot of male artists around. And if, if you're not yeah. actually actively given those female artists to listen to, discovering things pre-internet was a little bit harder I guess that's so true that's so true I guess yeah you just picked up what was kind of around yeah so by the time you started writing songs when you were 14 and you said you weren't really doing covers but you were you know writing your own stories but did you have was John Denver still an influence or were there other songwriters who were influencing you by then it's funny I did I did stay pretty true to to John Denver and Jimmy Buffett I think I must have had like a Shania Twain record Um, I remember Jack Johnson around that time was quite, quite popular. And I think I really related to him just because of the sort of beachy lifestyle and care for the ocean and things like that. So 
I definitely probably took on a bit of a persona as like the female version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I'm also wondering if having had that childhood where it was basically an adventure, it's a, I would imagine being on a, on a boat is an adventure, uh, particularly when you're that age. I'm wondering if in terms of your creativity, it, it encouraged you to believe that, that to have no, well, encouraged you to have no expectations about what might be around the corner. Because obviously in your day-to-day life, you couldn't know what was about to happen. Not that any of us really does, but yeah. on the ocean, you can't. But creatively, I'm wondering if it really expanded your sense of what was possible. I think so it's funny I think as I get older I'm probably only just understanding what that trip meant I definitely think like you know probably through the support of my parents in general I've always had like a I can do anything you know anything anything's possible kind of view but I do think that that adventure and travel at a young age probably just taught me I guess how to be adaptable to kind of all sorts of situations and also never to settle um, in one place. And I do think that's also been helpful in, you know, growing and developing my songwriting is to just always seek new experiences and, you know, not kind of be around the same people or environment all the time, just sort Mm -hmm. of change it up. Yeah, I think that's important. And you just mentioned adaptability. I would think that's really useful as a performer as well, because you can never really expect what happens in a live setting. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) I think in a music career, I'm sure any creative career in general, it's just, you're just adapting all the time to try and kind of sustain it. Yeah. (laughs) So the guitar came at 14, songwriting, obviously, well, I'm guessing you started singing at that age as well. Did you have a sense of wanting to be a singer or was songwriting more of the focus? I think songwriting was definitely the kind of the the focus and the vessel. Um, Yeah, I I had a funny, like I was really shy in in the way of kind of performing at school till I kind of met a couple of teachers that really encouraged me to get out there and do it. Um, And I think just, just what happens is once you put yourself out there and you find that you know your friends think it's good or your teachers think it's good or your parents you know you start to like just gain a bit of confidence from that um and so I just kind of rolled from there kept going kept putting myself out there yeah and and developing your singing voice because I was listening to your previous album 2019 and I can hear a a difference in your singing I mean it's obviously (laughs) you but there's there are changes so I'm wondering if as a singer, you are consciously changing or whether this is just something that's coming about as you create different types of music and, and write different songs? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Like, I don't, I don't know that I'm conscious of it, but I think I don't, yeah, and, and you know, no one's fault, but I think my first couple of records, because they fell into more of a kind of commercial pop genre there was a bit more need for like perfection in the vocal or even auto tune when maybe it wasn't needed just to kind of fit in with that you know sort of sound and I think as I've grown older I've just tried to celebrate the imperfections and the more kind of raw honesty in my voice um which I do think has like maybe created a bit more of a depth than the recordings I've been making recently yeah yeah, auto tune's an interesting one because I remember reading years ago that I think Barbara Streisand apparently sings a little flat. It's like, who cares? <laughs> She's Barbara yeah. Streisand. <laughs> oh, no, I think that's the scary thing is that you, you know, our ears are kind of used to hearing these perfectly in tune vocals, which just kind of isn't realistic, really. Mm-hmm. Like you can be the best singer in the world and you always have a bit of a off moment. <laughs> <laughs> And you mentioned those first two albums and they were on a major label. They were with EMI and um, and I guess all of the stuff that comes with that in terms of, of music videos and, and appearances and performances. And since then, you, well, you made an album in 2019, which was as an independent artist. And this, this new album is also as an independent artist. Is there anything that you miss about the big label lifestyle? <laughs> Yeah, it definitely was easier. <laughs> um, oh, I think it was just that when I um, when I had my first kind of label situation, I actually just was part of a really cool team of people. Um, you know, just by chance, they were kind of who was given to me. But it was really nice to have, yeah, like a, a, a 
a really solid crew, a really good team of people that kind of knew what they were doing. You could kind of ask how things are supposed to work. And But um, no, I mean, even now, I guess the only difference is that I've got to choose my own team a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, I think that's kind of a really great, great thing. And also I've had a hand at um, all the different parts of the industry that I probably wouldn't have <laughs> looked into as much before. And I think it's just super important just kind of to know the logistics of it as well. Mm. And I can hear in the music as well, when you shifted away from a label and became independent, there is, it was a change in the sort of music you were releasing. So did you feel that there was more creative freedom or was it just a, it was a different decision to the different yeah, reasons to move away? It was, it was probably just a different decision. And also like, I almost felt that I had no choice. I couldn't have written another record like those first couple. It just wasn't right. in me anymore. Um, and so it was more just going like, hey, where, what am I going to do? Like, where am I going <laughs> to go? Who am I going to work with? And I just, I just knew that I wanted to go and experience Nashville and kind of connect with more of that traditional country sound that I'd grown up listening to. I didn't know really what that would mean. Um, I kind of understood that, yeah, you know, my, my royalty checks might get less, but, <laughs> um, but I think it was all in the name of just trying to do something, you know, true to me. It sounds a bit like going to Nashville, which I think you did in 2017, was almost like a, a quest, not to find yourself, because it seems like you did know yourself. It's more a quest to find out a story, like a, 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 a your musical story, almost like an origin story, if that makes sense. Definitely. I think it was a quest, definitely, like to kind of, yeah, find find myself and my sound and also just almost kind of confirm to myself, like, was that really what I wanted to do? Did I want to make country music? You know, what was it all about? And I think what was actually the most important thing that happened to me on that trip was I met Nash Chambers for the first time and kind of sat down with him over coffee and was talking all this stuff about how I wanted to make country music and blah, blah, blah. And he was just like, whoa, 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 like, um, let's just stop talking about genres and focus on the songs. (laughs) And it's funny, like, it seems like, duh, but I needed that at the time it was Mm. kind of just like absolutely like let me just write what I want to write and if it comes out any which kind of package then cool you know (laughs) but I suppose it can be hard to do that as well when when a genre gives you a structure particularly if you're if you're trying to write new songs it's like it's like in in books that crime novels have a certain structure and that can actually liberate writers and and knowing which genre you're in can can give you that same kind of liberation but yes his point was a good one (laughs) yeah exactly it's like it's that that really fine balance of yeah kind of knowing what you're aiming for but then at the real core of it just kind of focusing on you know the art Yeah. yeah as you were going through this exploration did it feel scary at all because you were leaving something you knew a type of music you knew and moving towards something that was unknown was it so was it purely scary a mix of scary and exciting or just exciting or none of it I think yeah no, it's, I think if I look back now it was scary but I don't think I let myself feel that right. um because I would have got too overwhelmed right. um I I don't know like I just I guess I felt like I had nothing to lose so that kind of helps with the <laughs> with the element but yeah, I was I was just excited. I think I also had not too much expectation. Like people had said to me, "Oh, you know, you'll really love Nashville. It totally would suit you and all of this stuff." But I just mm-hmm. kind of went in there going, "I just want to see how this place works. Um, see if I can meet some like-minded people." And it, you know, just sort of turned out that I I did. Yeah. So you started working with Nash then and uh, that album Extraordinary Girl also featured Casey Chambers and Bill Chambers. So it was a family affair for you. But (laughs) Nash, of course, is well established now in in Nashville, appropriately. Um, So even even though you um, met him, I don't imagine it was automatic he would produce that album or this because he's also produced the new album so was that or did it become automatic the more you yeah, got to know him I really thought about it I think um actually I, I think it happened pretty quickly I had 
when I'd got there, I'd been sort of writing these new songs and I'd sent him some iPhone demos. So I think he just straight away got a feel for just my voice and what I was wanting to do. And maybe he just thought, yes, I can get, you know, get on board with this. So I was, yeah, I was really grateful to have his kind of support. Yeah. When I, you know, whenever I needed it. Um, so it was kind of just a matter of me, like getting my ducks in a row and getting ready to record up there, which was amazing. And I just, you know, I've grown up like singing Casey Chambers, you know, <laughs> I kind of was just like couldn't believe the humility and the just willingness to to get involved in this kind of random Kiwi Girls project. It was really special. Now, having that <laughs> produce your new album, I imagine was not an uncomplicated decision given the restrictions on travel over the past couple of years. Because you're in a country that's had its lockdowns in New Zealand. The United States was not somewhere that those of us in the Antipodes could get to easily. So how yeah. did, or did you manage to get to Nashville to work with him? We were really lucky actually. So we, we must've finished recording the record maybe a couple of months before the COVID pandemic kind of, uh -huh. yeah, hit the world. So we, we were like, man, this is scary, but thank goodness we kind of done our last day of <laughs> recording and at that point I was in Canada and Nash was in Nashville and we were just like okay well cool like we've got the record we don't know what's going to happen we don't know if it's going to come out soon but we've got it here you know ready to go when it makes sense so, so that was like, a couple of years ago that you finished it yeah yeah we have actually like we I mean it's hard to say but I think without COVID we, we may have released this record like a year ago it right. just didn't feel like it was going to make sense at the time like I'm sure many artists have gone through that kind of juggle um so for me like getting ready to release this is just such a like I feel like I've been building it up for <laughs> quite a long time it is a long time to hold on to such a big piece of work um and I, I imagine releasing singles helps but still you know what you have and what the world hasn't heard yet so is it, if, I guess it feels like it's fermenting almost. <laughs> it does. And it's, it's been really hard for me to get into the mindset of like creating new music while I'm still holding on to this project. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, for many reasons, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I need to kind of share it now. Like I've really been looking forward to being able to do that. Well, I, I think the world will be happy to have this album just quietly. Um, now, the album is self-titled and it's obviously it's the first self-titled album you've released and it's your fourth. So I'm wondering if it's self-titled because it's the one that felt, felt most like you. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I don't know, I just never really considered self-titling an album before until this one and I was just like, yeah, like it is. It's the first album I've recorded where I'm really like, kind of not having to convince myself to be uh, proud. <laughs> it's like, I'm just a hundred percent. This is me. Um, you know, every part of it, I'm so happy with. Yeah. It sounds, uh, it's, it sounds on the, in the songs that there's a mixture of personal and like as in personal experiences to you and stories that you're telling about other people, but it does all sound like it's part of your experience, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, that would be a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, this album's definitely, like, it revolves a lot about family um, and definitely, like, the storytelling elements were important to me to try and kind of achieve those moments. And I think just mainly my whole kind of mindset was just, like, say what you mean to say, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's a little more literal this album there's not so many metaphors and things it's just it is what it is and that's been hard at times because some of the subject matter is you know very personal mm -hmm. but it's, yeah it's it's really liberating um I don't know I I, I kind of feel like maybe this is what you'd feel like if you'd written a biography or something if you were getting <laughs> to release it but yeah it's um I, I, I'm proud of those kind of brave moments, yeah. Because there's a song for each of your parents. Yes, there's poor boy for your father and, and her mother's, my mother's daughter for um, your mother and each very different stories in their own way. But the whole 
album sounds almost like you're weaving a spell. It's hard to describe actually, as someone who tries to describe music, when I first listened to it and kept listening to it, I was thinking, I feel like I'm in some kind of like spell or fugue state or something's going on where I just want to hit repeat on the album. And so I often wonder with a singer and a creator, whether that comes back to your intention as you, as you record, like whether you feel like you're connecting with the listener, even at the point of recording or before the point of recording so that when you open your mouth, that connection is there to make. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, I have to be honest, I, I, I actually don't consider the listener very much when I'm recording. It's, 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 it's very much for kind of my own freedom um, and, and almost, I would say, like emotional well-being. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's, that's kind of usually at the core of it. But, yeah, I think um, I, I know there are a few songs on there that I do really hope, uh, you know, the vulnerability in them is inspiring. Mm-hmm. I think that's an important, um, you know, place to get to at this age and I'm turning 30 this year and (laughs) I'm feeling really uh wonderful in this kind of place of acceptance that you know life has its ups and downs but all of it it means something Mm. I think maybe that vulnerability is is where the spell's been woven from because it's coming from a deep place within you so it's yeah it doesn't matter if the if the listeners um there with you or not so yeah that connection is definitely felt and I can hear there's a bit of echo on your end I think <laughs> I'm telling you to ask you one more question <laughs> if you can hear me okay um you have some guest artists on the album Tom Busby Erin Ray Robert Ellis were they the people you wanted to work with or did you find a song to fit um for them um um I'm trying to think. So I think with, I know with Worst Crime, when I, when we initially wrote that, I I didn't love it until we had the idea of making it a duet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I knew straight away that Rob was someone that I, I would love to have on the song. I think that's, that goes for every, every single feature that we've, that we've had. It was just straight away hearing that person's voice. Um, I mean, Erin Ray again like I I would have never thought that she would have said yes like I was just so excited you know that she was willing to support such a special song Tom Busby I've done a bit of touring once I was was pumping that that. (laughs) he was still it and you know again like I heard his voice on that track immediately but then you know really like it was just such a incredible honor to have the McCreary sisters come into the studio and lay their vocals on Sailor. It was like maybe one of my most kind of favorite highlights as a musician ever, um, especially because, you know, spirituality for me revolves around the ocean and it was just so wonderful to be able to kind of share that with them in their way and include you know their kind of gospel history and sound and yeah it just felt really amazing and it does actually the song swells like the ocean as it (laughs) as it gets towards the end so it's really lovely um but jb i will leave it there and uh i think i know that you've held on to this album for a while but it has to be the perfect time to release it i guess because it's now it's coming out very soon um and it is (laughs) as far as i'm concerned a perfect album so thank you very much congratulations And I uh, look forward to new music from you some point in the future. And meanwhile, people can listen to your already released music. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>